Good Friday morning, everyone. I'm First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panamich. We do have some weather going on today, but we've also got some pretty cool space weather going on. And if you don't know what space weather is, it has to do with the sun's interaction with the Earth. Uh, there's a lot of hype uh, out there. There's a lot of misinformation. But there is some cool information that I need to pass along to you about what happened with the solar flare the last two days. We had Earth-directed solar flares that could help uh, enhance the auroras or the northern lights. There is some other issues that we could encounter because of the, uh, the interaction with, the, with our uh, ionosphere and the magnetic fields of the Earth. But I wanted to show you this really cool image right off the bat. This is an image showing the uh, solar flare. And if you look in the middle of the screen, watch this sunspot area. This is where it emits and boom, you could see it uh, come right at the screen. Uh, the reason this is a significant solar flare, it was an X-class flare, which we, you know, we use those to kind of figure out the level of flaring. Um, this is at the highest level. Now, there's a, once you get to the X level, there's a one, there's a numeric scale as well. This was at the lower end of the X scale, so this was an X 1.6 or so. Um, we've had much bigger, but the thing that's interesting about this flare is it was directly right at the Earth. So what you're looking at here is a, a, a model of what is heading our way. These are called coronal mass ejections. I know that's a really fancy name, sounds really crazy. What it is is a big burst of electrons and protons in the solar wind. And if you look carefully, the Earth is this green dot and the sun is that yellow dot. And these two little look like waves. These are the CMEs or the coronal mass ejections. They're both heading right at the Earth. And the first one is arriving right now. And when you look at the model, you see the little peak in green here. Um, off to the right and then you see a secondary peak. There's a chance these two can combine and that's why even though the flare was pretty large the geomagnetic storm could be pretty significant because both of these flares uh, CMEs are going to come together and possibly cause some interruptions in satellite data, uh, maybe interruptions in, in GPS and power grids. Um, this is a look at the geomagnetic storm and just uh, storm scale and right now we're forecasting a G3 which is right in the middle. It's considered strong and this is not the big doomsday scenario a lot of people think of. That is a possibility at some point. If we get a big solar flare at some point, um, this can play havoc with the power grids. Uh, these protons and electrons in the solar wind interact with power lines, they interact with piping and plumbing, and they induce a charge. They can actually create like a power surge. And so uh, when you look here, you see power systems corrections to voltage. That means the, the power companies are going to have to play with their voltage because there will be surge. False alarms are triggered. You can get... Um, you know, a lot of circuit breakers to pop, protective systems like that. Um, spacecraft, this is really big for, for satellites. This creates a lot of drag on them. Could, there needs to be a correction. And really one of the main impacts to us um, as far as what we have is cell phone, satellite service, GPS. All these things could be disrupted slightly. Not a huge amount, but, you know, if you get static on AM channel or your ham radio operator or you have some kind of radio frequency, you will get a lot of uh, interference. But the most important part of this, at least in my opinion, is the chance that we can see the auroras or the northern lights very well far to the south. This is where the northern lights are right now. Obviously, it's daylight in the United States. And you can see how vivid they are on the other side of the world right now. Um, and the forecast is, if everything comes together, and again, this is based on a forecast. Sometimes we're surprised. Sometimes we're disappointed that we could see the auroras all the way down into North Carolina. And this map shows a pretty good indication. The high latitude line, which is the kind of yellow line north, there's a 100% chance of auroras tonight. Between that line, which is called the mid latitudes, almost all the way down to the green line, which the green line comes all the way down to about Charlotte, uh, Atlanta area, there's a 40 to 70% chance, depending on the farther part would be around 70, the lower part around 40, that we will see auroras. And even in the low latitudes, down to the Gulf Coast, there's about a 10 to 20% chance that we could see auroras tonight uh, into tomorrow night. Um, and people ask me already, w w when's the last time this has happened? This is, there is some precedent for this. Back in 2011 in North Carolina, I went on my Facebook page because I remember this pretty vividly. This was the aurora on October 24th, 2011 in Stanley County, <laughs> just to the east of Charlotte. Uh, Marty Couples sent this to me. She lives in Norwood. Um, and she was shocked. She went out to get groceries and looked up and she set her camera up and got this picture of a red aurora and then sent me this picture of an aurora as well. You could see just beautiful, 
beautiful pictures. And um, to the north, I thought this picture was great. This was sent to me from Richmond, Virginia on the same date. Uh, you could actually see people out in their yards. There's a family and their two kids looking up at the aurora in Richmond, Virginia. So there is some precedent uh, for auroras this far south. The only problem, and I'll have to drag my weather data over here, is what's going on right now with the weather. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we are going to have a lot of clouds around later tonight as these clouds spread. It doesn't mean we couldn't get some breaks. So uh, I'm not super optimistic the weather's going to cooperate uh, for viewing auroras. But if we're lucky and you get a break in the clouds late tonight and tomorrow, there's a chance you could see something like this. So that's just a little bit on what's going on with the space weather. Of course, we'll talk about the rain chances later tonight, high school football, uh, storm chances around. I don't think everyone's going to have a washout, but uh, there definitely will be some storms around. We'll talk more about the space weather and the weather forecast tonight into the weekend, heading to the Panthers game. Coming up today at 4, 5, and 6 on NBC Charlotte. And as always, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or right here on my YouTube channel. Hope you have a great Friday, and I'll see you at 4 o'clock on TV.